So today I want to talk about my top 10 list of features, tips, and even hacks that you can do in Procreate 5X. We've done a similar video when it came time for Procreate 5 and even on 4, and I do believe that this is a video that this community here in this channel really likes to watch as you end up learning a couple of these tips, maybe even the whole list, maybe something that you may not know of. And this is always a good thing, especially when it comes to digital illustration. So I guess what are we waiting for? Let's roll the intro and let's get to it. Before we start, I just want to say that this video is sponsored by Sticky Bunny. So quick tip number one is using the reference option as a mini map guide for your illustration. All right, so starting with number one here on the list, which is how to actually activate the reference option and how to use it as a mini map for your illustration. As you know, many times we could be drawing, we could be getting really close here on our illustrations and kind of forget about the overall picture or the whole picture per se that you're trying to draw. And that comes into, you know, how the colors that you're using, the brush strokes, the thickness of the outlines and many other things. So first, for us to actually activate the reference option, we have to go into the actions menu, go here into canvas, and we're going to turn on reference. And now, as we can see, we have a floating window, which has the reference of your overall painting here in this small window. Well, one thing that uh, the tip for this video is that there are a couple options here, a couple like little tips and tricks in this reference floating window. For example, pinching on this window actually resizes the reference window into a full screen or there's like no more borders and it actually encompasses the ratio of your canvas. So it's a little dark here to see, so maybe I'll just bring it into this section, but now you can see that my floating window has the same ratio as my canvas by just doing that little pinch. And the other thing is that, as you may know, I can use the uh, activation method here, depending on yours, to actually bring the color picker. But here on the reference window, I can just actually um, kind of tap and hold. And once I do that, I actually activate the color picker. And this is actually really, really useful as well, because once again, you can be like really close here on this illustration, but perhaps you need like a value of color that is at the bottom or at certain section of your picture that you're not really here. You can just tap and hold and grab that swatch of color. Tip number two is how to replace the reference option from a mini map to a reference board for your ongoing illustration. Now for this next tip here, let's just say that you're not really interested in using the reference option here as a minimap for your illustration, but rather as a reference, as a true reference side window that you can have here while you're illustrating. Well, unfortunately, Procreate doesn't allow you to actually import multiple pictures uh, into this little reference window, like what you can do on VizRef, which is a great application for the iPad for that matter. But what you can do here, let's just bring the uh, toolbar and we're going to tap on photos and I'm just going to drag it here to the right side so that, I, so that I can have both open. So now I'm just going to select this, this other image and I'm going to drop it here on to the reference window and it's going to look like nothing has happened. But in fact, if I just tap here on my reference and I go image, it's going to show this image, this photo, this illustration that I just dragged onto the reference window. Now, by doing so, I don't need to actually use the options that are here at the top, which if I tap on import, is going to allow me to once again import a new image. So I'm just going to hit cancel and clear is going to clear the selection. And, you know, as again, the best part is that now by having a photo that I just brought it in into my reference window, I can use those same uh, tips that I've just talked about in the first one of this video by using the color picker get these new values and perhaps even apply to my current illustration. Tip number three is understanding what's velocity. What is this velocity option in the transform tool? All right, so now let's try to understand what this velocity is here located in the transform tool and under snapping. We see we have distance and velocity. Well, there are two things actually to talk about first before we talk about velocity. One is that velocity and distance are only put into place as you're working in your file if you have snapping on. If you have this turned off, none of these sliders are actually going to do anything for you. And the second thing, so let's just turn it back on so I can show you what it does. 
The second thing is that velocity is actually really linked to distance. So once you understand one, you will understand the other. So for now, I'm just going to uh, zero both. So let's just say distance set to none, velocity set to none. And now I'm gonna try to move this little sphere here. As you can see, it's moving, but it's only moving with the rules of the magnetics, which is giving, a, uh, giving us like a little vertical line or horizontal line. Now let's go back into snapping and now let's get distance up. For example, let's just set it to 30. What is this slider 30 telling us? Well, it's telling that Procreate now is looking for 30 pixels in every direction of this object to snap this object as you move it around the canvas. So as it's doing that, you're noticing that we're not picking up any other secondary lines, any other snapping lines. And why is that happening? Well, that basically is related to the tip of this video here in this, in this one, which is that we actually need a little bit of velocity for distance to actually come into play. So now let's just put velocity to two. And now if I move my element once again, now we start getting a little bit of action on those secondary lines. They are coming from other objects here on the canvas and it's trying to snap our object to, to these other ones here around the canvas. And you see that the, uh, our element is jumping across the canvas, but it's not really jumping um, you know, too, too much. And I'll show you, like as you can see here, we're still moving uh, very freely if I actually dial up the speed of my movement here around the canvas. Now, if I just reset, go back into snapping, and now let's just say that I'm gonna turn this all the way up, so 50, 50 pixels now looking in every direction of this object, and now I'm also going to turn velocity to max. Now, if I were to move this object once again, now it is very jumpy. And that is because we've set velocity to maximum. So once you have distance to maximum and velocity to maximum, your object is going to be very jumpy, trying to find other objects around the canvas to snap to. Hey guys, so I hope you're liking the video so far and all of the tips, but now just a quick break here for the sponsor of this video, Sticky Bunny. If you're looking to customize your devices with high quality skins, look no further. Sticky Bunny has got you covered when it comes to choosing unique and amazing skins for your iPad, your Apple Pencil, or even your gaming devices and controllers. On the outside, each sticker is cut to precision with laminate reinforced materials, while leaving the quality of 3M technology to take care of the inside. The result is a perfect combination of protecting your products both on the application and removal of the skins. They're always adding more cool options to their catalog. I personally love all of the Apple Pencil variations they have, going from graphical pencils to gradients, textures, and more. Their iPad skins can also pair up with some of the Apple Pencil designs for a complete aesthetic and will definitely make your device stand out from the crowd. Also not to mention that Sticky Bunny skins are the perfect gift for anyone who wants to carry their devices around in style. And if you order through the link in the description of this video with the code GHOSTPAPER, you will get 10% off your next purchase. So thank you Sticky Bunny for supporting the channel. And now, let's go back to the video. Tip number four, understanding what is this transform handle that is yellow, this new transform handle in Procreate 5X. All right, the next one is what is this yellow handle here for that actually showed up on Procreate 5X? Well, if you know this, or you probably do because just by working on Procreate 4 or 5, you can rotate elements with 15 degrees increments by touching the, or uh, rotating with the green handle here as we see in the, at the top of the uh, square. Now, once you commit to these changes, so if you apply these changes, and if you were to once again, use the transform tool, you see that now that the square is rotated but its bounding box, it's still facing us on the screen. So basically the bounding box is not really correctly positioned with the rotation of the square. Meaning that if we wanted to, if we ever wanted to undo this rotation without having to undo steps, for example, if you save this file and you lose the history or the undo steps here, you wouldn't be able to necessarily put it back if this was a weird angle, because now the, the bounding box just doesn't fit this element anymore. So let me just go back here. So why is there this yellow um, handle right here? It's basically for this purpose. Now I can hold onto this yellow handle, and as you can see, it snaps back 
into the element, allowing me to now have a proper bounding box or the transform handles are actually properly rotated to this element, which allows me to do, to, uh, do two things. One is to scale this to uh, the, prop, the proper kind of boundaries of this square to the proper uh, rotational axis of this square. And the other thing is to go back here in uniform. Now I can rotate this back and find the zero degrees position of the square. Quick tip number five, nudging layers by pixels without having to use your Apple Pencil. The next one is quite simple, but sometimes we wanna move things around. And by just moving with our Apple Pencil, you see that we're again picking up a lot of the magnetics and the snapping. And sometimes we just wanna move with increments, but we don't actually wanna go through the trouble of like really getting it right with the Apple Pencil. So you can just rest the pencil here on the table and you can use one finger to nudge and I hope that you can see it here on the screen, but every time you nudge, it's actually moving this one pixel in the direction of the nudge. So if I move this down, it's now actually bringing a bit like on a diagonal axis. So you really have to be careful where you're nudging. So if you go here, it's actually going on a diagonal axis. If I go right at the center, it's going uh, on a downwards uh, direction. So this is a really good case use case when you're just finishing illustrations you just want to get something right but you don't necessarily want to use these snapping tools tip number six which is now a bit of a hack how to create complex gradients with this new feature of gradient maps all right this next one here is a bit of an experiment but i'm hoping that we can create some complex gradients by using the gradient map feature which by the way is not made for that so let me just show you how we're going to make this first and what are the options to customize this complex gradient? So first, I'm starting with a 2K by 2K file here, just blank canvas on Procreate. My very first color is going to be black, and I'm just gonna fill up the canvas with black, and then I'm gonna create one more layer. We're going to set this layer all the way up to the brightest value, just make a white uh, color. Use just a studio pen uh, with some thickness here and I'm just going to paint this kind of like halfway through. So more or less like this. So just make sure that I have a properly filled section. So now we got a pretty much like a square, half filled white, half filled black. And I'm just going to merge even, that's totally fine. And we're just gonna go into the adjustments layer or adjustments menu, and we're going to choose Gaussian blur on a layer because we really just wanna blur a lot of this background here. We are basically here creating a gradient. So let's just say that we have this gradient, it's going full white to full black, but now we wanna create a complex gradient. So now that we have this gradient into, sorry about that, we have this gradient into one layer here. We're just gonna go into the adjustments menu. And we're gonna choose gradient map and as a layer. And look what uh, what's happening here and how cool this is. We're actually using, for example, Noir, uh, Noir here, and I can switch to Neon and you can definitely see what's happening and I can switch to Blaze and you definitely see that not only it's picking up one color to the second color or from A to B, but it's switching between other colors. So we have a little bit of orange, starts on almost like this very faint teal, goes to orange, goes to pink, goes to very dark purple. So how and why is this happening? It's because gradient map actually remaps the colors of your image. So brightest sections are going to be remapped by the by this value right here. And then, you know, kind of a mid-tones and mid-tone mid-tone brights are replaced by yellow, mid-tone darks are replaced by pink, and darker sections of your image are then replaced by this dark purple. So if we create just a blank kind of black and white gradient, we can then now use the gradient uh, map version here. And as you can see, I can tweak the, the points, the busier points. I can even insert one here and say like, I want this very kind of like powerful green, for example. And all of a sudden I'm creating a complex gradient with a feature that's not really made for that. That's so that's the bit of a hack that I was just telling you for this tip. Now, if we apply this uh, operation here, now we do have our gradient or complex gradient. And when I say complex is because it's a gradient compromised or made with more than just two values or two colors. 
And now we have this really cool gradient that we can apply. Let's just say like we can create another layer here. Make sure I got my studio pen. And if I make like a very big circle, fill that up. And now I can just, uh, for example, move this uh, gradient on top and just say that I want this as a clipping mask. Now we have our circle with a, with a more complex gradient inside it. Tip number seven, a faster way to color drag swatches into your illustration. This next one is quite simple and, but you know, some of you may know about it while others may not know about it. So I do feel it's important to talk about in this video, but basically there are a couple ways to actually fill a shape with color. And one of the most simpler ways to fill a shape with color is just select a color here on the color values. You can do it by harmony, classic mode, your color palettes, and you can just drag and drop this color onto a shape knowing of course when you do drag it and drop it there is a color uh, threshold that you kind of need to uh, make sure you're using the right color threshold so it's not like either bleeding out too much of this color on the entire background or at the same time just actually not painting uh, enough of the shape that you want it to recolor so uh, this is one of the most simpler methods, but uh, in Procreate 5, for example, you already had the floating color palette, which was really, really useful in a sense that you could have quick as access to your colors without having to actually go into the full color menu, which in fact, I do have to close this in order to be able to click here and go back into the full color menu. How however, one thing that actually happened here on Procreate 5X that is a little bit different that takes a little bit more of a delay for it to work is that you can actually drag a color from here straight up to a an object or a shape so however that's what i was just saying you can't just like do with that same speed as we do it here from the top of the swatch you actually have to tap hold and then drag here and as simple as this sounds I actually when i installed procreate 5x and was looking at the list of features I saw that this was possible and I even tried myself, but I was going super fast and I just couldn't make it happen. And I thought there was something on my side that wasn't working. Hence, that's why I'm talking and I'm, I'm saying that is important. I think here in this video for us to demonstrate that you do have to tap hold and then you drag it onto the shape. You almost feel that the swatch kind of contracts itself, uh, meaning that's like a, a, uh, an option that you have to actually move swatches around onto a color palette but you basically go, you're basically going to uh, drag it onto a shape. Tip number eight, which is a little bit hidden in Procreate 5X, is this new blur option in Brush Studio and how to properly use it. All right, the next one is a new feature on the Brush Studio for Procreate 5X, which is called Blur. And it actually lives here in the wet mix section of Procreate's uh, Brush Studio. And this new slider here, Blur, uh, does some really, really interesting stuff. And uh, I want to show you exactly what are some of the best use case scenarios. But in a nutshell, what the Blur actually does for us is that it allows us with pen pressure, if you draw really lightly on the canvas, it gives this very kind of faint, uh, very soft brush here. And these brushes are the new brushes that come with Procreate 5X. For example, there's uh, quite a few here in the airbrushing section and they're called the blend brushes. They are not the very top, the, uh, the famous ones such as soft brush, medium brush, medium hard brush, they are the ones called blend. For example, I'm using medium hard blend and as I was just demonstrating, you can get really soft kind of faded brushes with a very light touch to the canvas. But if I go a little bit harder with my pen pressure, I actually start to get some more defined lines. And why is this really, really good? Especially when you're drawing on illustration and you're drawing those like famous kind of like cheekbone uh, shadows or like lines. This is not the best uh, is example here because this is a very stylized illustration. But in that case, what we uh, used to do uh, or one of the most famous ways or common ways is to uh, draw a very harsh line and then go with the um, smudge tool and make sure on the smudge tool that you're using, for example, the soft brush and you just kind of soften the back section and just kind of create this gradient or this motion and this feeling that you're going from a very soft 
onto a very kind of hard line at the very tip so that you're creating that like light and shadows on the cheekbones. However, what I really want to show you is that, and I'm just going to use here, back into the blend brush, the medium hard blend, you're able to create that right away with your brush. With one brush stroke, you get this very soft beginning of the stroke per se, and then if you just keep applying pressure, you can get it all with one brush without having to use the smudge tool. So once again, uh, now if I were to just kind of tweak this a little bit, um, I am going to use just smudge tool just to get this a little bit out of the face here. I can get some really interesting shadows on this character, but I can really just get it done, everything, by just using one brush, and those are the blend brushes in Procreate 5X. Tip number nine, private layer, what is it and how do I use it? The next one is the famous option, private layer. And a lot of people actually don't know what is private layer and even where is private layer here on Procreate 5X. Well, private layer is an option where you're allowed to actually insert a photo, photo reference, something that probably you're going to use as a reference, but you not necessarily wanna see it once you play the time-lapse video of an illustration. So it could be like a reference or it could be like a live action reference or something in the real world that you're drawing on top and you're just using as a, as a base of a reference, but you're not, you don't really wanna have that once you make the time-lapse video and say you wanna share it on your social media or your YouTube channel or whatever you wanna share this video. So how do we actually insert a private layer? So we have to go into here the actions menu. We're gonna go into add and where we see insert file, insert photo, we just have to slide that to the left and there you have it, insert a private photo. So for example, now I could tap on this image and I've inserted a different color or you know mood for this illustration. But as you can see here in the layers panel, it says private. So I actually, if I were to just go here into uh, the actions menu and I go into video and let's just say time-lapse uh, time lapse video replay, I could see how I am creating this illustration, but I wouldn't really see the uh, reference layer that I've just inserted as private. Of course, this is not gonna work right now because I've already finished the illustration and I'm bringing the private layer at the very end. But if, the, if it was the opposite, uh, meaning I would bring this first and then do an illustration, whatever I'm trying to create, this layer wouldn't really show in the time-lapse video. Tip number 10, which may be something you know of or not, but is how to create faster full color palettes in Procreate 5X. Finally, about creating full color palettes here on Procreate 5X, it actually got really, really interesting. And there are a couple ways to actually create color palettes and full color palettes on Procreate. And uh, one of the most common ways, of course, is that you can create a new color palette and then start actually selecting values. So I'm just gonna select this one, tap here, uh, select another value and kind of build your color palette. But even more interesting, once you click on the plus, icon here on the palettes, you can actually create one from photos. So for example, just this uh, one that I've just finished, this illustration that had a very cool kind of gradient map, is giving me all of these like, um, you know, values. And I know that that picture had like an insane color correction. So really you're not getting a lot of difference here in the color palette. But if I delete this one, and I'm just gonna create a new one from photos. And for example, I tap on this tiger illustration, I have some really interesting color palettes that I can then create, challenge myself to make new illustrations. Perhaps I wanna, you know, once again, create a color palette from a photo. And this time I'm just gonna choose this candy here that I've designed. And as you can see, is a completely different color palette right here. And you can also tap this uh, icon of creating new color palettes and create one from camera. And I do have to kind of flip my iPad here a little bit and I'm probably not gonna be um, like very good for you guys to see, but I'll try to kind of like snap a picture. And just taking a picture of this section, I've taken a picture of my desk here and created a very interesting color palette with stuff that's around, around me. And uh, this is another really interesting thing that you can do, which is to take pictures outside, take pictures of places that you like, create color palettes, and kind of come back and create illustrations from that. That's something that could be like a very interesting kind of challenge that you can set for yourself. 
So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated. As well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, and painting videos. And that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Now on the right side of the screen, there's always more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.